And here are some of the excerpts from that, from those verses. Her worth is far above rubies. She rises while it is still night and gives food to her husband. She does not eat the bread of idleness. I say that one slowly. She does not eat the bread of idleness. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She extends her hands to the poor. She owns her mouth in wisdom. These verses from Proverbs reveal many virtues of a woman committed to a godly legacy for her family. A mother is encouraged to be a woman of character and integrity. Mm -hmm. And this must be based on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Word of God tells us in 1 Corinthians 3, 11, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, than that which is, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. So Jesus Christ is our solid foundation. Mm. It does not, you cannot build a, 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 a fleshly foundation mm. or a foundation of self. Mm. I think it's in a hymn it says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, yeah. all other grounds is sinking, sinking sand. sand. Yeah. So any foundation that is not built on Jesus Christ, it must be demolished in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because he is our solid foundation. Mm. In Psalm 127.1, the psalmist wrote, Unless the Lord builds the house, he labor in vain who builds it. Amen. That is the word of God. Mm. So our foundation has to be built on Jesus Christ. Amen. So you see, Everything we do and every move we make, it has to be in alignment with the Word of God. Mm. And in this way, you know, in, I think it's in Galatians 5, it speaks about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, self-control, gentleness, kindness. We have to live the fruit of the Spirit. Mm. We can't only talk it. We have to live the fruit of the Spirit. Mm. Pastor Sam spoke, uh, I think it was last week Sunday, about um, God's Word. Mm. How God's Word, it shapes us. Mm. Shapes us. He shapes us by His Word and through His <clears throat> Word. And He gives us clear direction. Mm. And we should use his word as our guide. Mm. Without the word of God, we are lost. Yes. This word we need in our lives every day. Mm. Not only sometimes. Not only one time a week. Every day. Mm. Meditate on his word. Mm. Hide his word in our heart. Word of God tells us again that his word is truth. Mothers, his word never comes back void. Mm. It says we are to trust him and obey him. As the son used this last week to our, or two weeks ago, he says his word, when we, when we read his word or obey his word, we'll never be embarrassed. Yes. His word never embarrasses us. Mm. What a promise. What a promise. Again, David, uh, in the psalm, you know, when we're godly, godly mothers, godly mothers, in Psalm 4 and verse 3, it says, Know that the Lord has set apart for himself who is godly. 
so mothers, parents, if we are godly, he sets us apart for himself. Mm. Our children are gifts from the Lord. And as parents and grandparents, we should be role models for them. Mm. We should be role models for our kids. Mm. Mothers should be involved in teaching their children spiritual truths. Mm. How are you going to teach them to spiritual truths? Only by reading the word of God. Amen. And leaving a godly legacy for your children and grandchildren should be the goal of every mother. Is that your goal? And all of this begins with discipline. We cannot depend on the world out there to discipline our children. Not in the schools. Mm. They take the, the, the large prayer out of the schools. They come here two hour, probably two hours on a Sunday. Yes, and they learn about that and discipline, about God and about discipline. But that's not enough. Mm. They need it every day. Mm. So godly disciplines begin at home. And as parents and, and as mothers, we have to be very firm and be good listeners to our children. The children might not like it, but they have to be there have to be some kind of structure. Mm. And if we as mothers don't listen to our children, some children rebel, some children they might you know have a, some kind of attitude or whatever the circumstances is, you know, make sure that, you know, you are a good listener to your child. And because if you don't listen, if we as mothers don't listen, they will find some, someone out there to listen. Yes. And sometimes they make the wrong choice mm. Mm. of the listener. Mm. And, you know, long term, there could be consequences. So mothers, I'm encouraging you, um, be good listeners. So to every mother who have a son or a daughter with attitude or rebellious or whatever the problem is, I say to you, the power to heal is in the power to love, in the power to care, and listen. Show compassion. Mm. My mom used to say, compassion is the mother of miracles. Compassion. Show compassion. Mm. I'm not saying parenting is, is easy. It's not easy. And, and especially in these, in these times. In my time, Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just be, be, be patient. Have self-control. Use the fruit of the Spirit. Give your son or a daughter a hug. Encourage them. And you know, let this hug and encouragement, let it be, be consistent with it. Yes. Not when you feel like. Mm. Don't push them away. Mm. You push them away, you know, um, they'll find other arms to go into. That's so don't right. Be consistent. Mm. And it makes a big difference. It makes it easier for, for us, for you as mothers, and it makes it easier for them too. 
As I mentioned before, leaving a godly legacy for your children and grandchildren should be your goal. And to do this, you know, spending quality time with them is very important. Quality time. Reading a book, going for a walk with them. A good, a good talk with them. Sit them down and have a good talk. And this good talk does not mean you are dictating to them. Mm -hmm. You are making yourselves available. You are making yourselves available for them. And this way, you are building a relationship with them. This is so important. It's so important to build relationship with, with, um, with your children. Be consistent with daily devotions, reading God's word, praying together. You know, reading the Bible together. You know, to get when you do this, you know, it, it, you're you're instilling spiritual values into into their lives. And this is what the legacy is all about. Mm. I remember my dad, and I'll come into that later, but uh, my dad, he, he, every Wednesday night, every Wednesday night, we were in his bedroom for prayer meeting. Mm. Every Wednesday night. I'll talk about that later, a little, a little later. Mm. And although faith and godliness for your children is ultimately the work of the Holy Spirit, yes it is, but as mothers and as parents, we have our part to do. We have to be sowing good seeds into the hearts and minds of our children. Because God uses the influence of, of, of parents and mothers to make a great impact in the lives of their children. Mm. And this influence could be life or death. The impact that you make on them, it could be life or, or death. Romans 6.23 tells us, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want for our kids mm -hmm. and ourselves, eternal life.